So I want to cover a few things in this video, but I want to do it relatively quickly. I don't want to bore you here. So let's talk about bivariate data. What is bivariate data? Well, we can define the word using two parts of it. Bi, like two, bicycle, bisexual, and variate, like variable. So really it just says bivariate data is two variable data. Now to give you a quick example of bivariate data, you've seen this kind of thing before. This and this, let's label this axis and this axis people's heights and people's weights. And you would expect the taller someone is, the heavier they would be, and the shorter someone is, the lighter they would be. And obviously there are some variations here, short people who weigh a lot, tall people who don't weigh very much. But generally, these two variables are, are correlated in some way. So bivariate data, it's two variable data. It's where you compare one piece of data against another piece of data, but you can do that in a number of different ways. All right, so you need to compare two pieces of data against each other. And you should remember that data is broken into roughly two categories. We have categorical data, things in categories, and we have numerical data, things that can be measured with numbers. And you've done this before. Categorical, things like favorite color, your gender, or the type of car you drive to school every day. Numerical, it could be things like weight, height, uh, temperature today, or the number of ice creams sold. They can all be measured numerically. Uh, now you know that you can break them up further, continuous, discrete, categorical, could be ordinal and nominal, but I don't need to go into that right now, as long as we understand that this categorical and numerical. Now it's important to understand that distinction between categorical and numerical, because when you're dealing with bivariate, when you're comparing two pieces of data against each other, there are three different things that can happen. Now the first one is that you might compare two numerical variables, and you saw me do that with weight and height. And the way that I did it was creating a scatter plot. This could also be temperature and number of ice creams sold. And we put our little dots in here and we could draw a line through it. And we could make predictions about if the temperature was this, the number of ice creams sold would be that. So two numerical variables, we could compare them. But of course, we could also compare one numerical data point against one categorical data point. Say something like a person's weight versus the type of car they drive. Now that would look a little bit different because we would have car A, car B, car C, car D. And then on this axis, we would have their weight here in kilograms, right? Uh, and we could create some bar charts, where this is the average weight of the person that drives car A, this is the average weight of the person that drives car B, car C, and car D. So we've got two numerical variables being compared against each other. We have one numerical versus one categorical, but we could also do this. We could compare two categorical variables, and these are the three things that we can do. Now, comparing two categorical, categorical variables, well, let's compare gender and maybe one more. I'm just going to add an important thing here, opinion on. So it might be your opinion on whether you love the Brisbane Broncos or you hate the Brisbane Broncos, or whether you love homework or hate homework, or do homework or don't do homework. Those might be our categorical variables. So if I'm going to do this one and this one and compare them, a great way to do that is in a two-way table. All right, so the two-way table might look something like this, and we can fill it in with some numbers. So 100 people were surveyed, um, 50 of them do their homework, 50 of them don't do their homework, 30 of the females do their homework, 17 of the females don't. You get the picture. Now, I've tried to do that as quickly as possible, um, just to give you a rough idea. We're going to look at all of those in turn in future videos, so don't freak out about learning all of that and knowing all of that. But the last thing I need to talk about are explanatory and response variables. And it's really important that you don't get confused on these. So when we're dealing with bivariate data, we're going to have an explanatory variable and a response variable. Now, the explanatory variable explains the response variable. Now, this is a little bit strange, right? Uh, so let me explain with our ice cream temperature example. So here's an obvious question. Do I sell more ice cream because it's hot, or is it hot 
because I sell more ice cream. So what's more likely here? Is the temperature of the, the, the day affecting the amount of people that buy ice cream from me? Or is the amount of people buying ice cream from me controlling the temperature of the day? Now, hopefully, you can see that this is true and this is not true. My ice cream vending um, business does not have the power to control the temperature, but the temperature does have the power to control how much ice cream I sell. Now, in this case, the explanatory variable is the temperature because the temperature uh, explains how many ice creams I sell. It explains the response variable. So I can say that the temperature explains the response in ice cream sales. The response being how much ice cream sales go up or down. So the temperature is our explanatory variable. So the temperature is our explanatory variable. And the ice cream is our response variable. Now this was an example of two numerical data points and we can see that one's the explanatory variable, one's the response variable. Now another example that I did uh, in this video was saying uh, homework and gender and comparing homework and gender. Now ask yourself which one is the explanatory variable and which one is the response variable. And a good way to ask yourself is to create a set of questions kind of like this one. Does your gender change depending on how much homework you do or depending on whether you did your homework or does the homework you do depend on whether you're a male or a female? So in this case, it's pretty obvious, right? Gender is the explanatory variable and homework done is the response. It can't work the other way. Doing your homework does not turn you into a woman or turn you into a man. So we say that gender is our explanatory and homework is our response. But sometimes it really isn't obvious at all which one the explanatory variable and which one the response variable is. And actually you kind of get to choose depending on the statistical question you ask. So two questions here. Can wrist circumference predict height? In other words, can I measure someone's wrist and say to them, look, I've measured your wrist, it's this, and so I think you're this tall. Well, if I do that experiment and try to test that correlation, you can see wrist is predicting height. In other words, wrist is explaining height. So this is your explanatory variable, and this is your response variable. But if I were to ask the question the other way, can height predict wrist circumference? Can I measure a person and say, well, you're 180 centimetres tall, so your wrist circumference is 20 centimetres, whatever it is. Well, in this case, we're saying, can height explain wrist circumference? So in this case, that one's going to be the explanatory variable, and this one is going to be the response variable. So when you're doing statistical stuff, the question you ask can determine which is the explanatory one and which is the response one. It's covered a lot of ground there. We looked at bivariate data, what is it? Uh, we looked at a quick classification of data and then we did uh, three different types of bivariate data, three different types of ways to compare data. And then the important thing, explanatory variable and response variable.